hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back this video is going to be a little different to my typical style where i tend to talk about one item one product for example per video a few weeks ago i put out a community post asking my viewers and subscribers to let me know of any luxury american luxury brands they wanted me to take a look at during my upcoming american trip I received a lot of requests for Mark Cross and I will talk about Mark Cross um, and dedicate a video entirely to that brand um, over the next few weeks. But I also got requests for a number, um, a small handful of homeware brands and also fashion brands. Some were on my own personal hit list and some were requests. And I also picked up on a few that were mentioned in the comment section of various videos. So again, I'll talk about all of those over the next few weeks. But two brands particularly stood out and i'll talk about them in detail i was walking along madison avenue where there were a good number of brands located that i wanted to talk uh, that i wanted to see and i'll talk about and i went into the armory and the armory is a boutique i have spoken about they stock autis bags i'm going to attach the video above where i reference that and autis um, is a brand owned by kamatsu san who produces some of the most exquisite handmade bags they are amongst the best in the world and he has a few pieces every so often stocked in the armory and they have branches in new york one in tribeca one on madison and then um, i think a couple in um, hong kong if not one at least and in there they have a number of typically male niche brands very much focused on quality and under the radar like the real mccoy for example i discovered there but i also got to see um, shoes made by arguably one of the best shoemakers in the world, a Japanese man called Yohi Fakuda. And I never for a second thought I'd get to see his shoes in the flesh. And I always thought when I go to Japan one time, then I'll get to see his shoes. But I got to see two pairs in the armory. Absolutely stunning. They are so beautiful, so well crafted. You, it actually feels disrespectful to wear the shoes. It's almost like you want to just display them on top of the box or something, but they're absolutely beautiful shoes. And just to look at them, even for the experience to appreciate shoes at the very top end and then imagine the quality that's going to come from them and the comfort to die for. The other brand I discovered, um, a Turkish brand, and I, you know, I was feeling a bit hard done by and I was saying to them, don't you have any female brands in here? But they do uh, stock scarves by a Turkish brand. Uh, the brand is called Remisu, started by two sisters, and they were focused on creating the classic scarf. All their scarves have a unique story, beautiful scarves, stories all over. Um, the visuals are, are different stories on the scarf, uh, made from silk. They're fairly big, very big scarves, 137 centimeters by 137 centimeters. And they're an interesting alternative, for example, to the scarves most people talk about. And I also like and own Hermes, for example, Loro Piana, Valentino. But what stands out with Remisu scarves is firstly the size and also the type of silk. It's a much lighter silk and the pictures are matte as opposed to, for example, Hermes or Loro Piana, where they're a denser uh, weighted silk and they tend to be, um, a, 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 there's a sheen on the scarf. So it's a, diff a slightly different take on scarves, beautiful nonetheless. And I like the fact that they're bringing in something different to the market. Um, snapped up one which I really like and I'm trying to figure out how to wear it I've worn it out a couple of times with a plain outfit and just used it to cover my shoulders but I'll talk about um, Rumisu and a number of other brands later on but as I was checking in um, the day before my flight I received an exploding offer from British Airways to upgrade from Club World their business class to first class and I jumped at the offer because it would give me a chance to talk about traveling um, first class first hand traveling first class is the pinnacle of commercial travel and my most requested topic to date is luxury travel and I thought why not do it and use it as a building block a stepping stone into this whole topic of luxury travel because when you travel luxury travel to me like I've said when I talk about luxury lifestyle is money needs to touch every aspect of your life and not just your outward appearance with luxury travel from the minute you leave the house until you come back from your trip 
it has to be luxury all the way. There has to be a lot of comfort and ease of movement where you're staying, what you're doing and so forth. And I just thought, why not use first class travel and a service that I used, a baggage service, as a way of just getting the conversation going. I'm Anesu Sagonda and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on quality under the radar brands, then my content is geared towards you. A week before I was due to fly out to the United States, I received um, a cursory email from British Airways going through check-in procedures, vaccination requirements for the United States, and also offering me complimentary access to a baggage service called Air Porter. Up until this point, I had never heard of Air Porter, and I was intrigued, and I thought, why not try it and see what it's all about? I'm all about the experience, a luxury experience from start to finish, and Air Porter would take the whole baggage hassle away. So I was intrigued to see how it would all pan out. So the week before, I booked my time slot, and they pick up your suitcase the day before you're due to, um, to leave. They come to your home, you need to have uh, checked in, so your boarding pass, a passport, and also the person who packed the suitcases needs to be present. They go through the check-in procedures in the comfort of your home. Um, you can check in as many bags as you like. With Club World, you have two by 32 suitcases. First class, I had bumped up to uh, two, uh, three by 32 suitcases, but I only had one suitcase that I was checking in. And I was trying to tell him I've changed. And he's like, oh no, I can see we work directly with British Airways. And Air Porter have three official partners, British Airways, American Airlines, and um, Swiss Air. So they pick up suitcases from London, either your home, office, or hotel, and some of the immediate home counties. And they also pick up suitcases from Geneva and Zurich. I have a sizable Swiss following, so and specifically in Zurich, so I think this might be of use to you. The more bags you check in with them, the cheaper it becomes. So for example, in London, it's 25 pounds uh, for the first suitcase, 28 pounds for two suitcases, and then it just gets cheaper. The price goes up, but it gets cheaper per suitcase. Uh, so as I mentioned, they come in, they do all the necessary check-ins. I was trying to tell him that I've bumped up. He could see this straight away. He took my suitcases. If you go over your allocation, then the airline just charges you directly for your excess. Two, three hours later, I received an email saying uh, your bags have been checked uh, onto your flight. What then happens is once you get to the airport the next morning, your bags go onto the flight um, and you only see them after customs at the baggage carousel. I cannot recommend this service highly enough. This is not a sponsored post. This is merely me acknowledging a service that is flawlessly executed. The website is very easy to use. Um, the staff are incredibly professional and it's enjoyable. It takes the whole hassle away of having to deal with your bags. Um, even if you check in before going through to the bag drop area and then you only see your suitcases at the other end on the carousel. And my suitcase was second coming out. It was literally 10 minutes from when I cleared customs, walked through to the baggage drop, to the carousel. My suitcase was ready and waiting and I was out within 10 minutes. An absolute dream service to use. Even if it wasn't complimentary, I would use it for myself because when I'm going to the US, I always take morning flights. I'm not a morning person. So being able to wake up, shower and go to the airport uh, and not have to deal with my suitcase or going to bag drop, even though I've checked in and I still have to queue, I don't have to do that. When I travel to Africa, I typically take the last flight of the day. And what always happens with each trip is at the end of the day, I'm racing to come back home, get my suitcase, and then racing to get to the airport. I don't have to do that anymore. Wherever I am, my appointments, I go straight on to the airport, get to the airport through security, onto the lounge, shower, have supper, board the airline, and I sleep. A fantastic service. About 10 years ago, I used to help um, families, typically with an entourage, with ground logistics, um, when they were in London. 
And the bane of my life was always the luggage. Uh, big groups of about 12, 15 people, for example. And then you'd end up with 30, possibly 40 suitcases. And it was tough staying on top of that, top of all the suitcases. I would have made it a requirement with my contract to use Air Porter because Air Porter take that whole hassle away. Day before, suitcases are ready, they take them. And all I have to figure out is just getting the family into the cars, to the airport, through security, and then either uh, the lounge, departure gate, and onto the flight. It just makes traveling incredibly enjoyable. Once I signed up for the service, I received an email um, offering 25% off to anyone, any of my friends I recommend the service to. This is not a sponsored post, but this is me merely acknowledging, as I've said earlier, a service that's flawlessly executed. You're more than welcome to use my full name when you are checking out, uh, paying for the service, and you will get 25% off the service. It'll be the best amount of money you will have spent when you're traveling because it just makes the whole experience that much more luxurious, easy, and thoroughly enjoyable. Air Porter is an amazing service. I'm typically not a morning person and therefore I really struggle with morning flights, but the first class and also the Concord lounge experiences um, were fantastic motivators and I couldn't have gotten to the airport any quicker. I arrived about an hour and a half before departure. Uh, British Airways First Class have their own designated check-in area, as you can imagine. It's at the far end of Terminal 5. You come in, they're check-in desks. Uh, staff were a little bit antsy about me recording, um, but it depends very much on the day. I've been around and seen um, other people recording, but check-in desks, to the, next to the check-in desks to the right is the security area. Came in, went straight through to security, and that took about three to four minutes and then you come out at the back end of one of the business class lounges. British Airways have about four lounges within Terminal 5. You walk through the lounge and then on the far end you have the Concord Lounge. For many years I've looked at the lounge longingly, wondering will I ever get a chance to experience the Concord Lounge? What is it like? And today was the day. And the only real difference I noted um, all their lounges are very well put together, well thought out, beautifully decorated. But the Concord Lounge, slightly different decor as you can imagine, it has the Concord memorabilia. But it's all about the service. It's, it's elevated. It's like you're in a private members club. It's the pinnacle of your lounges. And the staff uh, are incredibly professional, the service is faultless and they make you feel special. Um, they are there to serve you, to make the experience incredibly memorable, and they do a good job of it. You come in, there are a number of seating spaces. If you'd like somewhere a little more formal to dine, there's, city, there's there are tables and you can sit down and breakfast or whatever the meal is served. And then there are a number of other seating spaces, spaces that are a little more casual, and some that are geared more towards uh, working with tables, charging points. I was, in, I was incredibly mindful of the other guests whilst recording. So that's why I've only got snippets. And then there was also a fully functional, fully stocked bar that was up and running by 8.30 in the morning. And then of course, full washroom facilities. So whatever time you arrive at the airport into the lounge, you can take a shower, freshen up, um, and then eat and board your board the flight, whatever you prefer. Uh, arrived about an hour and a half before departure, came in, had a seat, relaxed, um, had some tea, read the morning papers, and then had breakfast, and then boarded the flight um, 30 minutes before departure. When you board the plane, you are warmly welcomed. And then when the greeter realizes you are turning left for first class, as opposed to right where the majority of the seats on the plane are, another greeter comes forward and offers to usher you to your seat. I'm a fairly self-sufficient traveler, declined the offer, but my seat was also right next to the door. As I walked towards my seat, the hostess who was in charge of the first class cabin walked towards me, warmly welcomed me, took my hand luggage um, and placed it in the overhead compartment. I immediately asked for my pajamas. When there's a pajama option on a flight, I always ask for the 
for my pajamas before takeoff and change. That way I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable and ready to either sleep or to work. I was shown through to the changing facilities, I changed and then my clothes were placed in um, a cupboard so they wouldn't get crumpled. And then I made my way back to my seat where a glass of champagne was waiting for me. As I was drinking my champagne, the hostess made her way round the cabin and introduced herself to each and every passenger. And we were all referred to quite formally. So Ms. Segonda or Dr. Martin, for example. But I want to talk about the first class travel experience from a slightly different angle. A lot of um, videos on YouTube are focused on the configuration of the cabin, um, the gadgets, the entertainment facilities and so forth. I can't add value in that respect. But what I would like to talk about is the two things that I think are what first class travel boils down to. The comfort and also the service. You are paying a premium for the additional comfort, for the ability to sit on a seat that's a lot more comfortable, to possibly lie down so you can sleep, and a high level of service so your flight is incredibly enjoyable. After the flight was airborne, aperitifs were served, and I asked for a gin and tonic. When it arrived, it was a little too strong for me, and I thought, I'll leave it and get something else with my meal. At the end of um, the service, the hostess came around to clear glasses before setting out all the individual tables for lunch. She asked as to why I hadn't drunk uh, the gin and tonic, and I said, oh, it's all right, it was a little bit too strong, but I'll have something else with my meal. Without missing a beat and being incredibly gracious, she asked if she could mix another gin and tonic, and I wasn't obligated to drink it if I didn't like it, but she wanted to try and see if she could salvage the situation. She came back with another gin and tonic, which was delicious. I drank and thoroughly enjoyed it. When it was time for lunch, um, I headed off with the passenger sitting next to me and we decided to dine together. The seats are configured in such a way that there is additional uh, leg, leg room space and that can be converted into a little stool. Tables placed in the middle and you can dine with someone else. What really stood out was the fact that the hostess created um, an almost Michelin star restaurant scenario in the sky. All the tables were set up, different passengers were eating different courses. And she, she literally glided through the service, making sure everyone was taken care of, doing the right thing at the right time. Nobody had to wait. Uh, she was engaging in a and occasionally made conversation. And then the third situation was um, at the end of the meal, she asked if I wanted to uh, lie down or I wanted to go back and, and work. What did I want to do? And I mentioned I wanted to lie down for a couple of hours. And she said, well, whilst you use the, the restroom, I will turn down your bed. Came back, my bed had been turned down. She had fitted, uh, she had placed a fitted sheet. There was a duck down duvet and a duck down pillow and an, and an entirely flat bed slept uh, for a couple of hours and woke up feeling incredibly well rested. It was the first time in my entire life I have flown, slept on a plane and woken up feeling really good. Usually I feel a little groggy, I'm uncomfortable, uh, something's happened because for example in club world the bed is at an elevation uh, you are given a cover to put on the seat, uh, a cover I can best describe as a diaper mat. It only covers half the seat, there's no real padding to it. And then you get um, a thick cloth that is meant to be a duvet. Every time I've received that cloth, I always ask for a second because I'm cold. And I also wear a, a jersey on top of that. And I, I never ever sleep and actually rest and manage to to switch off for the night and coupled with the noise even when you put in the earplugs but the difference between the club world experience and first class was day and night the flat bed the firmness of the seat and then the padding that came with the fitted sheet throw into that the duck down duvet the duck down pillow and the first class cabin was right at the front of the plane where it's considerably quieter. Once the earplugs were in, I was out for the count. I felt like I was sleeping on a hotel bed. It was incredibly comfortable, it was quiet, and I slept well. I thoroughly enjoyed that. 
But this video wouldn't be complete without me at least touching on luxury brands. As you can imagine, all the luxury brands within not just the first class cabin, but the plane as a whole are British brands. And what really stood out was the fact that it was the brands that are very much under the radar. Mighty in terms of the quality. Looking at, for example, the pajamas, British brand called Tempeli, super soft cotton pajamas. Absolutely loved them with a the satin trim. The only reason I didn't keep them is I'm petite in frame. And although I had small size pajamas, they were very big. I would need to actually get them altered. And I just thought, it's fine. I'll get something else um, from Tempeli, for example, see if they make pajamas. I'll pay a visit to the store. And then when it came to the dining experience, there was a, um, a linen tablecloth. Um, the cutlery was from a brand I highly recommend for the mid-tier, Studio William. Uh, the dinnerware, fine bone china from a brand based up in Stoke-on-Trent. I'm going to attach the video above where I've spoken about some of the best British brands uh, producing fine bone china in Stoke-on-Trent. It was William Edwards. And then glassware from a brand I first mentioned in my decanter video, Dartington. All the toiletries in the care pack uh, were from Elemis. Elemis is a British brand, but it's actually owned by L'Occitane, a French brand. But Elemis products are still manufactured in the United Kingdom and um, a, a good range of travel size, travel sized toiletries that you typically need uh, during a flight. Face wipes, face mist, face serum, eye serum, um, hand cream um, and toothbrush and toothpaste. Case was also uh, designed and created by Tempoli. So it was a good mix of brands. Uh, that fly the British flag highly and very much under the radar. So very much speaks into what my channel is about. At the end of the flight, as we're about to land, uh, again, the hostess came around to each and every passenger and thanked them firstly for flying with British Airways and um, just to say she enjoyed looking after us during the course of the flight and wishing us well for our onward travels. It was a thoroughly enjoyable experience and what it boiled down to was the comfort of the cabin and the service. The service was delivered to an incredibly high standard. Um, I have had a few not so great experiences um, with British Airways and the other airline I tend to fly with, Virgin Atlantic. I'm incredibly loyal to British Airways and when their flights are a little too expensive, switch to Virgin. But what I have found between um, British Airways, Club World and Virgin Upper Class is the last five, six flights, which have been split between them, the service has ranged from average to horrendous. And I've had to call out staff a couple of times. And what I've learned quite quickly is to preempt service. Uh, for me to have an enjoyable experience, when I board, I get everything I want um, in one go. So I don't have to deal with situations where um, I'm forgotten or they're giving care packs to everyone and then I get skipped and they never come back to me and situations that are incredibly ridiculous and I just thought I don't want to deal with this kind of negativity and it spoils the experience so I tend to be quite proactive once I have everything I switch off and just get on with the flight but first class and club world are day and night British Airways have perfected the art of giving service the way they give service is exemplary. And the hostess who looked after us was a veteran. She's somebody who's seasoned and knows how to react to any scenario, incredibly gracious and confident with the way she provides the service without being overbearing. I thoroughly enjoyed the experience and I'd love to hear other people's experiences of first class. Did they like it? What didn't they like? Um, what happened during the experience? But do subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my upcoming travel series. It's a little different to what is uh, out there on YouTube. But as always, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.